in this video i'll be showing you how to recreate this lovely ankara corset top i saw a couple of it on instagram on different pages and i thought i should try my hands on it and i'm so glad it came out really lovely you're welcome to Kema Freak. On this channel, I share holistic content about my life as a fashion designer, from tutorials to vlogs to, you know, fashion business talks. You're welcome on board. In case you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and enjoy our numerous content. Now let's get on to work immediately. In this tutorial, I'll be making use of the basic bodice block. There is already a tutorial for this on the channel. I'll drop a link in the description box. For mine, I decided to extend the length by one inch thereabout because I didn't want it to be too short. So next, you have to decide on the depth you want for this corset. I made use of 6.5 inches and I drew a line across. Then I went ahead to create a shoulder dart by connecting the bust point to somewhere in the middle of my shoulder right there. Let's quickly put a name to all of these lines so it doesn't get confusing. I have the chest line, the under bust line and the waist line which I extended downward by one inch i did the same thing for the back by the way at the center front you come downward by two inches that's what i wanted for the depth of my sweetheart neckline then i went ahead to tighten the waist and the under bust dart and i used one inch on both sides of the dart and then i went ahead to create the curve right there connecting the bust point to the under bust line and i Continued my dart to the waistline, same one inch on both sides. Now I am tightening the upper chest line, you know, the shoulder that we created. You have to tighten it just so that your cup sits very well on the upper chest line. I tightened by 0.75 inches on both sides of the dart leg, and now I'll connect the sweetheart neckline depth to the dart using a curve i made use of my curve but before doing that make sure that you extend by half an inch at the center front next i'm blending the other side of the cup into the armhole like so now along the chest line come inward by one or 1 1.5 inch i made use of 1.5 inch because we want to create our cup right now so i connected that sweetheart neckline depth to the under bust line and now i'll be connecting the under bust line to the chest line but then before i do that i need to close up the bust that hence i'm separating the front and back pattern so that i can slash my waist that and that will allow me properly close up the bust that Once the bust that is secured in place, I went ahead to add the additional one inch to the waist. You know, that is now two inches wide instead of the regular one inch. So I need to add back that one inch at the waistline and I connected it straight to the chest line. Now we can create the other side of our cup like so. Make sure that your cup is rounded and, you know, you don't make it too... You don't make it look like a v-shape so that way you don't lose you know the curve of the bust so we are cutting out this pattern i'll be cutting away all the shaded part which is part of the dart right and before i cut off the top of this cut head pattern i'll have to close up the dart just so i can blend my cup properly so it just looks better when you do that blending and one side doesn't become longer than the other. Now here is our complete pattern set for the front. Now I want to create a basque for the front pattern and I'll tape the center and the side panel of these bodies together. And I also did the same thing for the cup because we want to create a pattern for the cup as well. We don't want to make use of the regular 
cup you know two sides we want to make this a three-sided cup so i'm measuring 2.5 inches around the top of my cup so that i can separate that top piece okay first i taped the two sides together okay and then i'll draw a curve to separate the top from it because according to our design you know this is just one of the patterns and it look really lovely especially after highlighting the style lines with the bias so don't forget to label this is very important make sure that you know where the bust point is you know the side these pieces are facing because once you cut this through it's easy to you know mix them up and turn the center to the side and trust me that won't give you the best result once i was done labeling i went ahead to cut out the curves so we have these three pieces well labeled we'll set this aside and next i'll be creating the basque so i'm doing this i extended the pattern by you know about seven inches okay i made use of seven inches for mine you can make it shorter or longer and after measuring seven inches downward i marked two inches towards the side i later discovered i would have preferred if this was thinner that's if it was one or 1 1.5 inches i used then i just went ahead to use my um curve to create a curve joining the waistline to this basket extension okay so once i was done i cut it off and we have our pattern ready for the basque on this pattern you can go ahead and just draw whatever style line you want to see you don't have to make use of this style line you can decide to put more boning channels you are free guys that's the beauty of this you are free you can explore creatively so for this um even though i drew this i know that i later changed this to exactly what i saw <laughs> because i just felt well that looked good let's just recreate this exactly this but this was what i had initially this was what i had in mind initially at this point i'll set the front pattern aside and it's time to work on the back once again i drew i marked the upper chest line for the back and i made use of the same measurement which was 6.5 inches i think or was it seven i'm not very sure and I extended the dart from the waistline to the upper chest line. Now at the upper chest line, I tightened by additional quarter inch on both sides and I connected it straight to the waistline. Okay, the, the waist dart for the back pattern is still the regular half an inch on both sides. Now because I want this to have additional boning channel, I decided to draw another line. And now I want to create an opening for lacing, okay, for lacing the cut the back of the corset that's the closure if you're making use of a zip you don't need to do this what i did was measure 2.5 inches at the top and 1.5 inches at the base and i drew this slanted line at so now we have three pieces we have this the side back middle back and the center back and i'll be creating a modesty panel for mine which is it is just that um piece you have that allow your skin to remain closed even though you are making use of laces okay so but before doing that i decided to you know come down a little bit to create a more stylish neckline and i'm extending this pattern using another paper just so it allows me create my modesty panel okay so from the center back i have 2.5 inches right that means the size of the modesty panel i need must be times two of that so i need five inches plus maybe additional half an inch just to allow the modesty panel into the other side of the bodies i hope you understand what i mean then i squared down that line and it's just as simple as that we have a modesty panel so once again i label this and i showed the direction just so i know the part that is supposed to be at the top and at the bottom now i'll be separating the modesty panel from the rest of the pattern now you have two options here you can either cut all these panels separately and then you start sewing it back but there may be no need for that you can close up your darts and cut it as a single piece and use one of the boning techniques that allows you just place your boning on the fabric now there's a video on this channel on 
six different boning techniques i'll link it up above and in the description box you need to check it out for this particular corset top i am not cutting out pieces because i really don't have the time and what i did was just tape my darts in place and we are going to transfer it to fabric also for the front too, i didn't even separate the panels i just went ahead to cut this plain fabric like this okay after all we are still going to sew it back so what's the essence right so and in cutting this i decided to add not i decided guys it is necessary for you to add your seam allowance and i have you know i'll try and explain what i did because this tutorial is faster than i am <laughs> so after cutting out the panels i notched the positions of the channels both for the front and at the back so at this point i decided to modify the position of the boning i have one midway the base of the corset connected to you know the dart somewhere near the dart and then the other one somewhere along the curve still connected towards the dart so i'm making use of just these two for each side now after cutting the main fabric i went ahead to cut feasible interfacing and lining for all of the pieces and i'll just show you um, pieces right now we have all of these pieces now here is the modesty panel i have half an inch allowance on all the sides and the center back i have half an inch everywhere apart from the side seam allowance of one inch okay and for the front piece we have half an inch everywhere apart from the center front which has no allowance because it is on fold and also the side i have one inch allowance and on these pieces which we'll be using to cut out the cup i have half an inch allowance all around don't forget to place your notches where it matters especially on the cup notch the bust points you know notch the top part of the cup to indicate where the dart line meets it just so it makes your sewing process easier so once again i have half an inch one inch half an inch half an inch here half an inch everywhere with notch at the bust point then I'll, you'll be needing your boning i'm making use of this regulin boning because it allows me to sew on both sides and also i can choose to insert it but in this case i just i didn't even make use of that feature and then i made use of this black bias tape to create the boning channel just so it's easy and all i have to do is just insert the boning into it i make sure that i'm making use of a regulin boning that is slightly smaller than half an inch because the bias tape is just half an inch wide now i pin down the bias tape on the boning channels and I'll just go ahead and sew on both sides of the bias tape just the bias tape that way it is easier and you can just make a neat seam along the edge in such a way that you are not eating into the width of the bias tape and you still have enough space to insert your boning i did the same thing for the front and the back and i even went ahead to insert the boning for the back so now our cup don't forget the notches don't forget the left and the right side you have to indicate that on paper just so this stage just gets easier with that done i went ahead to sew the lower part of the cup together by half an inch and I, then you can go ahead and notch or you trim the same allowance it just has a way of aligning the cup rest properly once that is done go ahead and press open your seam allowance remember that we are making use of a bias tape to highlight the seam lines so i'll just go do that for these two pieces now here we have it once that is done then i'll take the other piece of the cup that's the top part of the cup and we're going to be sewing together by half an inch if you have placed the notch at that point then it, it just makes the job easier be sure that you don't mix any of the pieces up there we have it and just the same way i did with the first two parts of the cup i'll be using a bias tape to close up the same line for this this is what we we'll have so far i have also joined the pieces together for the lining as well okay the cup part i didn't add bone into the lining please please next i'll be sewing the lining and the fabric together that's for the cup by half an inch at the top once that was done i went ahead and i trimmed the same allowance like i said it makes it look better and 
I will go ahead, turn this inside out and insert my cup into the main fabric. Guys, confession time. I completely forgot I was not making a tube corset that this was an off shoulder corset. Guys, what I what I should have done was to sew the cup to the lining. That's for the lining and then sew the fabric separately, okay? But hold on. We'll do something about this. So guys, for this cup, if you notice that your cup isn't as deep as your fabric, you can just create a tiny dart like I, sh I just showed you. Okay, so after doing that, make sure that you spread your fabric very well on the cup and, you know, pin everything down. You can even use a hemming glue to steam press your cup on the fabric just so it stays in place and doesn't get rumpled, okay? Because the cup may not be shaped in the way you have created your cup, okay? Now I'll be sewing this cup onto the fabric. Now I'm treating both the lining and the fabric as a piece, uh, including the already made bra cup <laughs> in it. One thing that can help you with this step is to notch along the bodies, okay? Just that cup part because it gives it more room, allows you more freedom and you can sew more easily. So don't forget that the center of this cup, that's where we have the bias tape, should align with the bias tape on the bodies. All right. So go ahead and pin first so you can see the, the look, okay, before you go ahead to sew. So that way you don't have to rip at the end of the day. That's done. We have our cup fixed here. Just go ahead and put more notches. Just so your cup relaxes properly, you know, treat your cup with care. <laughs> now, Uluwa Kemi, the implication of what you have done is that you have sewn the part of this cup that is supposed to be the armhole. Okay, guys, we are just going to manipulate our fabric. After all, we are in charge. Is that not so? Yes, we are in charge. We are going to manipulate this to work because I really didn't want to pull out the cup. I just felt, ah, no, and I was working with time. Now here's our modesty panel, I'll be sewing on all the sides by half an inch apart from the side of the panel I'll be attaching to the center back. Note that I also ironed in my fusible interfacing and now we want to create the back lace. Okay, we are making use of loops, not eyelets. If you like a tutorial on how to create closure for your corset, both loops and eyelets, I can do that if you request for it in the comment section, just let me know. So I don't want my loops to go wider than one inch. That was why I marked one inch inward and I'll just create curves with my bias tape. Okay. I made my bias tape tinier by, you know, closing it up and that's what I'll be using for this and thank God it's black color. So I've done the lacing for one side. This is what I have. I'll just try and replicate that on the other side. They have to be equal, the same number, and they must look alike just so it looks good, okay? So I've done that here, and this is what I have. Next, I want to sew the modesty panel on the back. And, but before doing that, let's just close up the top of this with the lining. So I'll be sewing the lining and the main fabric together along the back neckline by half an inch and once that is done i'll top stitch on the lining with the same allowance so next i placed my modesty panel and sandwich it in between the fabric and the lining for one side Why on the other side we just turned the lining to close up the same line at the center back at, like so now i would like to give this corset a better structure at the center back and I'll be making use of the origin boning once again and I'm just going to stitch both sides of this boning on the seam allowance at the center back. That way it just gives that part a better structure and you know makes the <laughs> lacing look better generally. So I'll be doing the same thing for the both sides. that's done and dusted this is what we have lovely right so i'll set this upside and work a little bit on the sleeve now i have a piece of fabric here which i'll be using to 
create the sleeve it is 35 inches wide and about 13 inches long ex excluding the seam allowance please so i went ahead to fold the top and the bottom and then place the pattern on it to create the armhole curve just the same one i have on the bodies okay so now we want to sew our sleeve onto the corset but before we do that we have to join the front and back pieces together along the side we have a one inch wide seam allowance here so we are sewing by one inch okay after that i'll go ahead to press open the seam like this if you like you can actually attach boning at that side but i didn't do that for this so once again this is a uh, sleeve and i'll be joining the two sides of the sleeve together by half an inch once that was done here i'll be sewing the sleeve onto the corset so remember the blonder <laughs> with the cup right so what i'll be doing is to align the center seam of the cup with the center seam sorry the center seam of the sleeve with the center seam of the main corset piece make sure you open your seam allowance once again and i'll sew from one side but for the front i'll have to sew on the cup okay so you can overlock the edge using a black at least for this piece a black thread just so it's not so obvious and then make use of a very little seam allowance before you sew, go ahead and cut a piece of elastic band, you know, just the half an inch type. That's what I use for this. Although you can make yours wider, then insert it into the seam allowance at the top. I'll be doing the same thing for the bottom of this because of the type of sleeve you are going for. But you can make use of any type of sleeve, actually. So just insert it into that seam allowance. I made use of just 7 inches wide elastic band, okay? So after that, I'll go ahead and sew. So I've inserted it here, at least for the top, and it's time to sew. Done that. This is what I have for one side of my cup. I'm just showing you the bottom of the sleeve here. Why am I saying cup? I'm just showing you the bottom of the sleeve here to show you that it's still left open so that I can attach elastic band to it. So after sewing the sleeves, I'll be joining the two sides of the lining together as well by one inch, the same one inch. Guys, make sure that your lining is not smaller than the main fabric when you join. Don't make that kind of mistake. Make sure that your lining balances up. If anything, it can be a little bit more just so your cloth doesn't fit too tightly on you when you will still have some ease showing from the right side. So now it's time to turn the top of this cup and i'm just going to be sewing the lining and the cloth through the cup oh god i've done it here <laughs> okay through the cup onto the other side you know but i left one side of the cup open i'll be using a um ladder stitch to close up that we have a tutorial for ladder stitch on this channel and this is what my cup looks like you can see that that top where we manipulated the sleeve into it it does not come out obvious because the seam allowance is really tiny so i went ahead to turn all the raw edges apart from that side with the lining so this is what i have so far at this stage i haven't inserted the boning because without the boning my fabric is more flexible and it makes it easier for me to sew this corset okay so now i'm just measuring all the channels using a tape to close up the top of my and the bottom of my boning just so it doesn't poke out of the fabric or the bias tape rather so after doing that i'll be inserting this boning into it and you can go ahead and press your boning to make it flat but i just decided to make use of the curve on the boning and place it the right way so that it allows for waist tightening even though i'm still going to press it flat after this process <laughs> so really you can go ahead and press your boning straight so if you notice that any one is longer than the fabric, please still trim it off. Make sure that the boning you are inserting is at least half an inch shorter than where you are putting it. Just so you won't have to sew on the boning when you turn. Okay, that can be a disaster. So once I was done inserting all the boning, I went ahead to close up the hem of this corset by half an inch. So I turned everything inside and I sealed down. 
after that ensure that you notch especially the curvy part of the hem guys just so it relaxes properly and trim off the sharp side so that the sharpness shows okay so there we have it now <laughs> i have this wahala <laughs> Of having to pull out the entire piece through the part of the cup we left opened so yeah just take your time here and pull gradually make sure you don't bend your bones and the space is also wide enough for convenience it will only mean that you have a larger part to hand stitch once you are done but this is what i have i managed to pull through and here is what it looks like on the inside you know we have this opening right here guys so now we'll go ahead steam press this piece properly just to bring it back to life because it's looking really rough right now and you see looks way better right so next i'll go ahead to attach my elastic band to the base of the sleeve and yes this is our corset you can wear this sleeve in two ways as an off shoulder or as regular shoulder <laughs> guys i love this i went ahead to play around with a turtleneck inside because i knew that <laughs> there's no way i'll be comfortable with this much cleavage outside guys no no so yes and i loved it i love every bit of it i love the color pubs the ankara print let me know your thoughts in the comment section guys and if you enjoy watching this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're yet to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye.